This is my first and only 3D printer. Uh, I built it around three years ago for about 50 euros and although it looks like a piece of junk, I actually was pretty proud of it back then since it was at first my first 3D printer I've ever built and it was also one of the cheapest that you could buy, I mean that you could make uh, since the printers that you could buy went for at least a thousand euros and although the first prints came out pretty rough such as this Charmander uh, which was printed in ABS. I printed some modifications such as this extruder assembly which made the entire printer a lot more sturdy and the prints look a lot better. One example of the better prints would be this uh, tripod mount printed in PLA, white PLA ver verbatim, the one you see here. And I think it looks pretty good. Some of the major complaints about this printer though is that it's made out of MDF and MDF reacts heavily to changes in both temperature and humidity. So every time the humidity changes or the temperature changes, I'll have to recalibrate the entire printer again. And also the mere fact that I just picked it up from over there and put it on the, onto this table means that I'll have to recalibrate it again. So that's a big pain in the ass. Now, another complaint I have about this printer is that it's super wobbly and the maximum print speed I'm comfortable printing with is about 30 millimeters per second and that's with the jerk and acceleration values put all the way down. The last major complaint I have about this printer is, well, look at it. It looks like shit. There's no nicer way to put it. But enough of the complaining for now. I mean, this printer does have a nostalgic value for me and I don't want to pull it down too much. So why am I making this video? You've probably already read it in the title. I mean, it's pretty obvious, but I'm going to build my own printer again, a second one. And this time I want to document everything, all the problems I have and share them with you in the series. And later on in the series, I'll of course also make the new printer open source so you can build your own, improve on it. And yeah, anyways, let's finally start planning and uh, I hope I teased you enough for you to come along for the ride. So I was thinking about some different design ideas and this is what I came up with. Now, there are some obvious design cues that I think every single 3D printer should have. The first main point is that I want the printer to be very sturdy in regards to both static loads, but also dynamic loads, since the printhead will have to sometimes change its direction like multiple times per second which might induce resonance effects and may cause the steppers to lose steps. In the worst case scenario, which actually already happened to me, this might even break the frame itself. But I think a frame like this made out of 2020 extrusions will probably be sturdy enough. I might even consider adding side panels, which would make it even more sturdy. And this would also have the added benefit that I would be able to trap the heat inside. So plastics like, for example, ABS wouldn't warp as much. As for the XY placement of the extruder, I would like to go with a belt mechanism similar to the ones on the MakerBots. The nice thing about this mechanism is that the build plate actually wouldn't have to move at all. And since you are using two belts per axis, the drive system itself gets even more rigid. Since I could probably get a similar pre-built printer for the same amount of money that I'll be spending on this printer, I also wanted to make it a bit more unique. Looking at my screen, you might have already guessed what I'm talking about. So the entire top part of the frame will be put on rails and the height of the printer will change depending on the height of the print itself. At first I wanted to use like proper linear rails for that, but those things are way too expensive. I've seen um, linear rails as go as low as 20 euros each and that's, I mean, that's very cheap. But considering that I would need eight of those, that's still way too much. Instead, I started to look into draw rails and found these on Amazon for one euro 20 each. They are pretty stiff and what's really nice is that they have absolutely zero backlash. So they might actually work as a replacement for those expensive linear rails. So I ordered a couple of those. To get a proper amount of Z height, I might even connect them together in pairs like this but that might make the build a bit flimsy again. Anyways, I guess it's definitely worth a try. I think I'm just going to stop the video right here because I wanted this video to be just a normal introduction and uh, to show you my project and what I'm planning planning on doing. 
But uh, to give you a little bit of a teaser, I'm already working on the Z rail system and I'm playing around with some different screws and soldering and whatnot. But uh, yeah, if you're interested, uh, stay tuned for the next video. And until then, see you later.